the pride of my heart. I love you so dearly, from you I'll never part. Always so tender to you I'll be true. Virginia, I love but you. Virginia, Virginia, the pride of my heart. I love you so dearly, from you I'll never part. Always so tender to you I'll be true. Virginia, I love but you. Gentlemen, be seated. Well, Arthur, how do you feel this evening? Very salutious, Mr. Stanley. I hear you have a new occupation. Oh, yes. I prescribe for the horses when they're sick. I ain't exactly the doctor. I only help them. I hold the horse while the real doctor gives the medicine. Oh, I see. You assist the doctor. Mm-hmm. The other day, the doctor got a long, thin tube and filled it with colic powders and cholera stuff. Well? Then he says, now put the tube into the horse's mouth. And when I give you the signal, you blow and blow just as hard as you can. As hard as you can? Yes, yeah, so all the stuff will go down the horse's throat. I see. So I guess we're ready. All ready? Drew a long breath. You drew a long breath. Uh-huh. Put my mouth to the tube. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, what then? Well, just then the horse coughed and I got all the medicine myself. <laughs> Harry, do you know there's a great difference between the songs of the birds and the songs of men and women? Oh, oh yes, quite, quite a difference. The bird begins to sing as soon as the company begins to talk, while the company begins to talk just as soon as the person gets up to sing. Yes, of course. Yes, my, my, my young lady's quite a vocalist. Indeed. Yeah, her, her, her favorite song is, Would I Were a Bird. <laughs> Arthur, Harry seems to amuse you this evening. Yes, Mr. Stanley, I think that's funny. She, she's 42 and weighs 210 pounds. She's a healthy bird, ain't she? <laughs> Would I were a bird. If you could see her eat, you'd think she was an ostrich. <laughs> she calls me Birdie. <laughs> I said to her, don't call me Birdie, for I ain't got no wings to fly with. Just then her father came in and he said, here's a pair of wings for Birdie, and here's leather boots fit for Birdie, and Birdie Blue. <laughs> Mr. Collins will sing the humming coon. <laughs> From Johnson was the deacon of the church in Tennessee. And the course it was against the rules to sing a ragtime melody. But he from said this ragtime moves my soul. I feel like a newborn coon. And if I cannot sing the words, well then I'm a grand to hum the tune. Mm-hmm. Well, only two. Mm-hmm. Morning, night, and noon. Every time you see him coming, old man Johnson was a humming. Mm-hmm. By the light of the moon, mm-hmm. everyone knew it too. Now it's fair how they calling him Johnson, they call him the humming cool. Well, Albert, what to say? Well, Mr. Stanley, we had a funny hen on our farm, but my uncle was so mean that he wouldn't feed us. So the poor hen had to go to the sawmill every day and eat sawdust and shavings. Sawdust and shavings? Yes, indeed. And she laid a dozen eggs and hatched them. You ought to see them chickens. Eleven of them had wooden legs and the other was a woodchuck. <laughs> Losing chorus. Climb up, ye chillin' climb. Climb up, ye little chillin', climb up, ye older people, climb up, do the Now I am your guest for heaven, go 